the choices that they give you to vote on all belong to them. Why do you think Charles Collins and Rosemary could not get in the debates? Could not get on ABC, NBC, the Communist News Networks, or any of the rest of them? Why do you think the American people were never shown them as a choice? Because you're not going to get a choice. They will put two or three up there for you to vote on. All belong to them. They'll even make it like they're really against each other. They'll make you believe it. They'll even throw you some trash about one of them so maybe you won't vote for him thinking the election's fair because ah, that's not a moral person. And then who do you put in the White House? The most immoral person that ever lived on this planet. <laughs> William Jefferson, Communist Clinton. You don't have a choice. That disappeared a long time ago. There's not a nickel's worth of difference between the Democratic and Republican Party, and hasn't been for an awful long time. And it doesn't matter which one is in the White House, we still go toward the New World Order, don't we? We still go more and more into socialism, don't we? But if they were truly different, that wouldn't happen, would it? So, I guess that, uh, <laughs> what time is it? Anybody get the time? 2.30. Let's take a very short break. Let's hold it to 10 minutes because I've got an awful lot to cover, folks. Thank you very much. Uh, we are also going to do another Groom Lake trip. How many of you are interested in Area 51, Groom Dry Lake? That's going to be almost the entire subject of tomorrow's lecture. We're going to do an awful lot about that tomorrow. It's one of the major manipulations that's going on. It's something everybody is curious about. It involves uh, tremendous technology and uh, a lot of mystery, and uh, it's extremely interesting. So, pardon? Uh, that's going to be in uh, August. Uh, let me see, June, July, August. It, I think it's the end of August, f around the 1st of September. Is that Labor Day? Labor Day. It's going to be over the Labor Day weekend. We'll be going there. Is anybody here who went the last time with us? Gary. Stand up and tell them about our Groom Lake trip, Gary. And they were testing behind us because they knew we were there. <laughs> Did you have a good time? I had a great time just keeping up with you and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> How about the people that came? All really nice people. Fantastic people. Only the best people ever come to our activities, and I'm not exaggerating at all. They are the greatest, most gracious, most polite, most concerned people that I've ever met in my life. And that's why they come. That's why you people are here. You care. If you didn't, you wouldn't be here. And that's the truth. So many of you fit into that category that I was just talking about. Some of you just grouch the old codgers and you know it. <laughs> like, like I get sometimes. 
Now, if I get a little impatient sometimes on the radio or anywhere else, it's because I've been doing this for so many years, folks. I don't want to be rude to anybody. I really don't. But I've learned a few things. One is there's no time left to suffer fools. There just isn't any. So if I'm confronted with a fool, I just let them know it, get it off my chest, get rid of them as quickly as I can, and hope that that is enough of a shock that maybe they'll get out of their foolishness, okay? Because there just isn't any time. We're going down the tubes on a roller coaster. There is no time to tell you all that you are brilliant, wonderful American people and that, uh, you know, with people like you, we don't have any problem. We're going to turn it around right away and, you know, pass the hat and put some money in there and hoorah. Bullshit. <laughs> it ain't true, and I ain't going to tell it to you. You're never going to hear that from me. We're in this situation because all of us, me included, were dummies for most of our lives. And unless we change that, we are never going to turn anything around. And that is the cold, hard truth, whether we like it or not. And we all, at some point in our life, have to go in the bathroom, confront our own self in the mirror and say, Bill Cooper, you've been a fool for most of your life. What is the matter with you? You've got to stop it right now. You've got to stop being stupid. You've got to become a real American. You've got to care about things. You've got to find out what the truth is so you know what to care about. And it's hard to say. I know because I've done it. I couldn't be up here if I had not confronted myself in that manner. You've got to do that. You have to do it. If you can't, you can't make a change. You'll never understand. You'll always be saying, well, I ain't no sheeple. I ain't no fool. I know everything. I know what America is. <laughs> okay, just hope that I'm not around when you say those things. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> There's lots of things um, that you can do, that you need to do. But... Uh, I want to uh, just sort of give you a few things that are recent so you'll, you'll know. And these are not really terribly serious things. Some of them are. But they're just things that you will all understand. And you'll understand them quickly. Listen to this. How many of you know who Alvin Toffler is? How many of you have read his books? What was the first book? Future Shock. And then after that was what? No, the third wave came after the second wave. <laughs> yeah, he, he wrote a whole plethora of books. Now, there's some people you can listen to who are not gurus, God's not whispering in their ear. They don't have a crystal ball. But they are what I call the inner circle. They know what's coming. They're part of it. And when they write or they talk, you'd better listen to them. One of them is Henry Kissinger. Listen to Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger doesn't just get up and jaw. If he says something that's important, listen to him. Whether you like him or not doesn't make any difference. But I've discovered that most people who ever meet him really like him a lot. He's very charismatic, very polite, very gracious, very nice guy. He's also one of the biggest traitors that's ever lived. But isn't he in good company? Really? Another one is Alvin Toffler. And there's lots more, and I'm not going to go through the whole list. But Alvin Toffler, whatever he writes, is generally going to happen. Another one that you have to read is Foreign Relations. Foreign Relations is published by the Council on Foreign Relations and you can subscribe to their publication. Whatever they write in there usually happens about two years later. Whatever it is. It's almost like magic. If they're not involved in any of this, how come what they write about always happens? 
Almost everybody in government belongs to the Council of Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission, or both. Toffler admits to having been a Marxist in the third wave. He wrote it on page 24. Now, when a socialist admits that they were a Marxist, what does that mean? They still are. Toffler says in the third wave, it requires governments that are simpler, more effective, yet more democratic than any we know today. What's that a code word for? Socialist. It is a civilization with its own distinctive world outlook, its way of dealing with time, space, logic, and causality. What's that mean? World outlook, world government, world control. Causality, social engineering. Do you understand what I'm saying? They speak in a code that they understand perfectly. The average person hasn't got the slightest idea what they're talking about. And if you don't study them and their symbology and what they believe in and what their agenda is, you'll never know. You could read this and never know what this guy said. Oh, that sounds nice. That's what most people say. Oh, that sounds nice. Doesn't it sound nice in a way? But if you really understand, it's not nice at all. What they're saying is, screw you, we're going to enslave you. We're going to engineer how you live, how you think, how you work, everything. Hitler tried it, didn't he? You see, this is a big de deception that Hitler was a right-wing guy. Hitler, and you better learn this if you never learn anything else in your world. Hitler was a socialist. Nazi means National Socialist German Workers' Party, doesn't it? Hitler socialized Germany. All control is always on the left. Always. If you're left wing, you're for control of yourself and other people. A scale measures two extremes. On the far left, you have total control of everything and everyone, and, by the way, ownership of everything and everyone, by the state, which is more important than anything. It's called communism. On the right, all the way at the extreme, you have the total absence and lack of any and all control by anybody over anything or anyone. That's called anarchy. Anarchy sucks. Communism sucks. Socialism is just a little step above communism and usually degrades into communism, and it also sucks. Usually, anything close to anarchy also sucks. And so do all those people who want to engage in those things. To tell you the truth, they're in a mind state that sucks. A constitutional republic is somewhere in the middle of these two extremes and provides safeguards to protect individual freedoms and creator-endowed liberty. Whether you believe in God or not, if you don't understand that freedom and liberty must be creator-endowed, then you are opening the door for somebody to take it away from you because they don't have to answer to a creator. You understand? So even if you don't believe in God, you better start. If you want to stay free, if you want to stay free, if you don't care about freedom, you don't have to believe in God. You see, there must be something that human beings answer to to protect us from ourselves. Because the minute we become God, how many of you in here want me to be God? I don't want me to be God either. Because I know who I am. I know the temptations that I'm subject to. I have seen what power can do to people, and I might fall prey to that same corruption that would allow me to use that power wrongly. Even Jesus Christ, if you're a Christian, was tempted. What was it that Satan offered him? 
the world. What is it these people are after? The world. Jesus turned it down. They're not going to. If you were to give me the world, you know, I'd be hard put to turn it down. Because then I could make it the way I want it to be. Is it the way I want it to be the way you want it to be? You don't know that. You don't know, and that's the big problem. Why would you even want to take a chance? I'm a pretty good guy. But you don't want to take a chance on giving me the world or anybody else. You don't want the world. You don't want vast amounts of power. Because you're a human being. And power will corrupt you and destroy you, and you will use it to destroy others. And that's the truth of the matter. You don't want it. Toffler said in the third wave on page six, this book is based on what I call the revolutionary premise. <laughs> That's Marxist if there ever was a Marxist statement in the whole wide world. Here's what he, here's also what he says on page nine. Now if you don't understand the ordo ab chao technique, order out, of, order out of chaos. By the way, that's the motto of the 32nd degree of Freemasonry. Ordo ab chaos. We'll just devolve everything into a state of chaos, and out of that we will bring order to the world the way we want it. And everybody will get down on their knees and thank us for restoring order and security to their lives. And they will be willing to give up anything to us for that favor. Quote, in the United States today, as in many other countries, the collection of second and third waves creates social tensions, dangerous conflicts, and strange new political wave fronts that cut across the usual divisions of class, race, sex, or party. All the old polarizations and coalitions break up. End quote. How many of you women thought Gloria Steinem was doing you a favor? Gloria Steinem is a communist who created the concept of feminism to destroy American family life. Feminism is not good for you. Being a responsible woman is good for you. Being a good person is good for you. Whether you choose to do it in business or in the home doesn't make any difference to me. And yes, you should get equal pay for equal work. And yes, you should have the vote and all of this other stuff. But feminism? Feminism is war between women and men. It was created intentionally to destroy the basic unit of freedom in this country, and that's the family. Toffler even admits that there's a plan. On page 10 of his book, quote, Life may indeed be absurd in some large cosmic sense, but this hardly proves that there is no pattern in today's events. In fact, there is a distinct, hidden order that becomes detectable as soon as we learn to distinguish third wave changes from those associated with the diminishing second wave, end quote. There's always been a plan. They call it the great work the great plan, the lost word. There's all kinds of words for it. It exists. It is being brought about. It is conscious. It is working its effect upon us now, today, as I speak. Now, I'm going to just give you a little demonstration of the degree of control that is already in effect in this country concerning communications. Now, if you're smart, you know that if you turn the dial on your radio and on your TV set and on every news story, it has the same slant in the same words, and it's the same stories 
you know that the news and the media are controlled. If you don't, you're not playing.